Estás viendo Canal América, Televisión Dominicana para el Mundo. A Time for True Show is sponsored by the office of Dr. Bernard Fiakoff, a periodontal, dental implant and laser specialist in New York City, for over 40 years. Dr. Fiakoff was honored by the International College of Dentists and Pierre Fochar and received the Presidential Lifetime Humanitarian Honor from the White House. Call us at 718-229-3838. Sometimes life can be so damn hard You don't know where to go Everything is falling apart yeah. You try to do your best But only God knows that you given everything you've got But the world takes you down You just keep moving on at your feet. Welcome to a Time for Two show. Happy 2024. And here's to a great year. So tonight, you know, we're going to talk about something that It's being lost in all our technology, all our uh, advances, and they're wonderful advances. I mean, they give us so much more time, so much more leisure. But, you know, we have to take a look also at what are we losing? Because when you look at society and you look at some of the turmoil we're having across our country, you realize we're losing the humanity. We're losing the, the warmth and the kindness of mankind and so tonight we're gonna deal in something that's so beautiful because it's artistic aesthetic and it brings back that humanity and we're talking about prose and poetry and beautiful words and what they symbolize and the meaning that it brings to our life and we're so lucky tonight to have with us all the way from British Columbia in Canada, Mr. Kevin Taylor of Vancouver, a poet for almost 60 years and engineer, if you can, if you put his pictures up on the screen, there we go, there you see Kevin. And as you can see, he's an artist for sure. I love his get up there. He's been a poet for, as I said, about 60 years with a purpose to communicate. Let's bring up his next image, please, engineer, to share. There you see him teaching and is sharing with other fellow artists and to expand upon new or already established common realities, but to increase what we have in our lives. Taylor creates space. So realities can be made to exist by way of aesthetics. There you see him with his wonderful wife. They've been together for so many years. Great couple. Kevin defines his poetry as the achievement of art through language, rhythm, and form. He studied briefly at the University of Prince Edward Island and his works have been published in small press poetry magazines. And since the advent of the internet on online magazines, he's also published in scholarly works. And most recently, a work called Walling In and Walling Out. Why are we building new barriers to divide us? In the School of Advanced Research, Advanced Seminar Series, and University of New Mexico Press. This introduction is headed by a verse from Robert Frost's poem, Mending Wall, which gives the book as its title. The book's conclusion is headed with Kevin's poem. 
the new apartheid editor, Randall H. McGuire and Sonny, distinguished professor, wrote, Personally, I want to thank you for capturing in 13 words what we struggle to say in hundreds of pages of academic prose. And to that, Kevin responds, that's poetry. Engineer, if you will, let's bring up our guest live on the screen and a bit of warm welcome to Mr. Kevin Taylor. Welcome, sir. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, it's a pleasure, a pleasure to, to have you. And, uh, you know, I want to get right into it because I know you have so much to share. And to me, it's so important so that our world can actually have more aesthetics, have more art. But let's talk a little bit about you first. I'm very curious, when you were a young man, what were your dreams? Uh, the first dream that I had that I remember at about uh, six years old, um, you may laugh at this, but I told my mother that I wanted to be a Scientologist. And uh, she said, no, no, son, that's, that's a scientist. You must study hard for that. So I did and didn't find what I was looking for. Um, I, I, I found later on in my life a similar sounding word. Anyway, um, then I wanted to be a, a nuclear physicist and I dropped that after I read some um, uh, stuff I didn't understand. And then I decided I wanted to be an archeologist and I was, um, I was uh, in university on, on my, uh, in archaeology, and there was a, we had a, a term paper to write. And uh, I wrote this term paper, and I wasn't sure how to end it. And I had this brilliant thought that, that uh, it didn't matter anything about anything else. The only thing that really mattered was that we survived as a race, as, as mankind. And, and so I said that survival was the, was the prime uh, the prime thing. And my professor, I felt so, so smart with that. My professor um, read it. Uh, he blew out. He read the whole thing to the class. And, uh, um, and um, uh, there were th that was it. I had achieved what I wanted to achieve in, 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 uh, in the subject. And so I went on to writing. There you go. Very interesting. So it's interesting how you go from nuclear physics all the way to the other side to art. That's amazing. Well, I was always a bit of an artist. And, and, and the, the thing about it is that, that, that nuclear physics, physics has, has, has no soul. And, and, there's, and there's, no, uh, there's no room for me to, to accept to, to just, you know, uh, sit, sit behind a, a desk somewhere for the rest of my life and, and, and spout out silly things. I, I, I liked in poetry, I liked, um, I liked the spirit in it. I, I, I picked up, I was in Halifax, that's in, in West, Eastern Canada, one day at a bookstore when I was about 17. And I, I, I knocked over a book, uh, a bot, stack of books and a book fell into my hand. And it was the collected poems of Leonard Cohen. And I, I opened it up, I read two pages and I said, that's it, that's, that's my life. And, and, and it went from there. Yeah. Um, I get a lot of joy out of it. That's beautiful. I guess it's like when you first laid eyes on your wife, huh? That's a fact. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Because um, I know you, you've, been, uh, you've been married for how many years now? 40 years. Wow, congratulations. Uh, Congra I wrote a that, verse about it. She's that's what that's what I call art in motion. It is. I wrote a verse about that. Uh, I'm, I'm a little older than she is. So the verse just goes, they say I robbed the cradle. I say she robbed the grave. <laughs> <laughs> very, very, very interesting. Now, let me ask you a question, because I've heard this. And I was curious why this is because I I would think with art being, a law, uh, 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 being around so long, but why is it said that art is the least codified of human endeavors and the most misunderstood subject? Well, um, 
that's tackled best in a book called Art by Hubbard. Um, but I, I would say that uh, the, fir the first, first off, it is never it was never really well defined. You know, you, you just know you know art when you see it, but there's no definition, there's no workable definition, or there hadn't been um, until it was defined in the 1950s. Um, it's the same for poetry. Poetry is not is not defined. You can go into any dictionary and they'll, they'll, you'll get a circular definition right there. But poetry is beautiful writing. Or, but there's nothing you can apply to see if that's actually is this a poem or is that a poem? Um, so um, and it's it's it, it's when you don't have the definitions in there and, and a, you you end up with authorities who decide what for you. They decide this is what is good. This is what is bad. Um, uh, this is art that's not art, and then later on, it just it's just where the money goes. So, um, in, it, it's 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 worst of all in poetry. That's they're, they're the worst off, because everybody can say that anything is a poem, and they don't necessarily know what the mechanics of poetry are, or 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 um, uh, and 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 if you say, well, I have a definition for poetry. You will be laughed out of the room because it, 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 they've decided. Authorities, as teachers, have decided that you cannot define it. It's undefinable, and therefore, it's mis there's no understanding. Um, and uh, I went the other way on it. I said, "Well, that's just not true." I, I accumulated about a hundred dictionaries going from about from about the 1600s up until uh, the modern day, and for, took the definitions of every definition of poetry that was was in any one of them and put them together in, in, in chronological order and watched it how the definition changed. And we've gotten, uh, you can't take a, a modern definition and decide whether something is or isn't poetry. You can't write a poem from it, you can't do it. So I had to, I had to figure out for myself what a, what a poem is and what poetry is. Like we have, you're familiar with, with ethics and morals and they're two different things, but they're, but they're they're mixed up together sometimes in, in society. They, they use one for the other. It's the same with poetry and poems. Poetry, for example, is a is a spiritual thing. It's completely spiritual. It's it's it's, it's in the realm of thought, pretty high aesthetics, that sort of thing. Um, but a poem, and so so poetry is is infinite. It's just infinite. Um, call it soul if you like. Um, a poem is finite. It's measurable. A poem is on, on a page, ink on a page. It's 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 a uh, it's uh, uh, things coded into a CD. It's a man on a stage reading a poem. It's 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 the pages in a book. It, it's 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 whatever. It's it's something physical and tangible. And it is the portal. It is the it is the means with which the reader um, is able to access the poetry. So well, this, let me let me ask, let me ask let me ask you a question. Because I, I was looking through your website and I saw how many different types of poetry you've written <coughs> and composed. And what I was curious, how is it you decide the theme of what you're going to write a poem on? <coughs> oh, um, I don't usually sit and, and say, oh, what will I write a poem about today? I, I, I did the other day, but I don't do, usually do that. Um, what, um, what happens is I'll see something or I'll hear something and, and, and there's a, there's a, a musicality to it or whatever. And I say, oh, okay, where does that go? And then I, and I, and I go, okay, this is where I'll take it. So, um, uh, that's, that's, that's how I decide. Uh, I'll write it out and then I'll, I'll, my process is, a, is I'll, I'll put out my first draft no matter how bad it is, out to, to some public people, some people. And that that process of communication actually unclicks something. And I go, oh, no, no, that's, and, and I, 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 I redraft the poem and that's until I've got it honed exactly the way I want it. And it can take a hundred, a hundred times. Anyway. Wow. And yeah. now yeah. you mentioned that one of the things you like to do is to use your poetry and to work for peace with this art form. And I wondered if you could share with our viewers more about your concept of how you do that and how you feel that that could actually work. 
so we could actually bring a little more calmness and serenity to our social, our communities, you know, to our country, to the world? Um, sure. Um, the, well, there's a couple of different ways. One way is, is, is my writing has, has usually some foot in the spiritual side, at least. Uh -huh. It's all uh, quite spiritual, or there's, there's, a, there's at least a toehold over there. Um, but I'll let, me, let me give you an example. Um, uh, we've been, my wife and I married about 40, 40 years now, but um, we've had a, maybe four or five arguments that were really arguments in that time. And uh, about nine years ago, there was a, we had a, an argument and it, uh, it, it got kind of ugly. I mean, it, was, it wasn't, we weren't, we were, we were not being nice to each other and the next day i went to work and i thought i felt really bad and so i did what i do is i write a i i i, I crystallize what's happening with me in a verse and put it aside so i don't have to worry about it till later and but i could still feel my wife her upset on on my all over and so i thought well i better do something to see if i can help there and i found a verse, I wrote a verse, and I, I sent it to her. And about a half an hour later, she was look, she felt like she was fine. So I was at a I was, I'm a commercial window cleaner, uh, by trade. And I was I was in front of a, a, a hair salon. And a lady in the window was waiting. And she had a book on forgiveness she was reading. And uh, as I peeked over her shoulder. And then I went in there and I said, you know, I've, I'm a poet and I've written a verse that I, I haven't actually read to anybody and I want to see how it goes. Would, would you be okay if I read it to you? A complete stranger. And she was too polite to say no. So there's 30 words in this verse. And by the time I was done reading it to her, she was on her feet and in my face saying, I know someone who needs that right now. So I thought, that's amazing, the reaction from my wife, because when I got home, there was no upset. Nobody mentioned anything. Uh, this lady had, had had a big reaction. So I, I was on the way home and I said, well, is there somebody else I know that has an upset with me? So maybe. And I thought about it and I realized, yes, there is actually. I have a family member who hadn't spoken to me in 10 years. And nobody would tell me why. And my mother wouldn't tell me why. It's, it was just a big mystery. And um, so I sent her the, the verse. And three days later, I got an email that said, thanks, Kevin. That was nice. Um, no upset. So I thought, well, that's great. Three for three. But about a week later, I got a 10-page email scrolling through, 10 pages of her catching me up on the, how her children had been, what the dog had done, what she was done, their goals, the, the, all, all the, whatever was going, to go, going on. No mention of an upset. It's like two friends catching up after you know being apart for years. And I still don't know what the upset was. I don't care, but I'm in great communication with this person. So I thought, well, what would happen if you applied this to groups? Well, it turns out this woman, that's this lady, this, uh, was, uh, uh, what do you call those guys? That, uh, a conflict resolution person. And she got a hold of it. And she decided that she said, she wrote to me and said, um, uh, at the end of the day, I'm exhausted from all all this counter emotion and counter counter stuff, and and I'm just exhausted. It, it takes me, you know, all night and a bottle of wine to unwind. And uh, and then I got your your little poem, and I, I have it on my wall in front of my desk, and I just sit there and read it at night, and it just washes it all away. So I thought, well, that's just amazing, and it has other pe people that have cried because they could have had they could have saved a marriage or something. So I decided I would send it to all of the sitting members of the United Nations who were in war torn or conflicted areas and to uh, many of those world leaders as well. Um, and uh, uh, I did that. I, I, I got a I got a calligrapher, uh, one of uh, an American fellow, uh, uh, John Stevens, fantastic calligrapher, world class, does work for Disney, uh, Rolling Stone, the Library of Congress, you know, good stuff. And I told him, I showed him the verse and he said, okay, I'll do it. And he, he didn't charge me what he would have charged. He just, he, he thought it was a good message to get out. And um, uh, so I sent, I, I sent a copy your way. I don't know if you got it. 
of this little this little thing here and okay. it's um uh i don't know if you had a chance to, to look at it or not um well you know what i was going to say to you I, i'm sorry to interrupt you <clears throat> but i realized something that we could do since this show is going to go out to so many people and this is spontaneous and unrehearsed would you be okay on reading your poem right now on our show I, I would love to. In fact, I intended to when I took, <laughs> took on this. This this this. this so uh, let this, you know what. Thing. Let's go ahead then. And here we have a poem to bring some serenity to our world from Kevin Taylor. Please, Mr. Taylor, go ahead. All right. I, I call it when I call it this poem. I call it "Sweet Home," although that's not its real title. It's just so, so I can find it. And they open it up like this, and then like this, and like this, to read it. And they have to go like this, it's so big. So they have to participate when they read it. But it says, when I am done with being right, and you are done with being wronged, perhaps then we can speak of something small and bright that we can both agree upon. That's all there is. Very nice. And the reactions you get from this are, are absolutely insane. People will, 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 will it's, it's hanging on walls all over the world. It's uh, in, in offices. It's, um, uh, it's, it's, hang, it's hung on a Christmas trees. Um, uh, um, people come up to me and say that it saved their marriage. I don't know. Uh, it's just, it's just something, you know, it, it, the, the problem I think in our society is, is in, in, in a great degree, is that we no longer or we resist association with other people or with other groups and and um, and so we're not in communication very well with them and this here this here little verse it says okay so putting aside all of the other stuff if we can find one little thing that we can agree on then then we can make it we can do it you know uh for us for me it was my grandson um, but but for for others it's it's other things you know it's it's a, a, a small bright thing we agree on so much more than we disagree on but we're sold the disagreement wholesale and so that's what that is for um, there's another version of this because somebody decided that that it wasn't uh, it was too poetic and not and not um, not inclusive enough uh -huh. so I rewrote it but it's just it's it's not my favorite but it's just, when I am, or you are, or we are done with being right, and you are, or we are, or I am done with being wrong, perhaps then we can speak of something small and bright that we can all agree upon. It, you can have whatever one you want. I don't you, care. You, you know what? What you're saying there, even though it's a simple comment, is actually very profound because if you really look at it, what are most of the problems in this world that are coming about is not by communication, but one party and the other being right, trying to make each other wrong, and does doesn't really get anywhere. And you know, I think it, it's very, very astute, very smart. I can see why it works. And what I wanted to ask you, what's your viewpoint on how the sound and rhythm of poetry affect our moods and attitudes? Well, I think it's everything. I, 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 I'm all in on that. Uh, I read some poetry sometimes that is not written for sound. People don't, uh, they write it just to be read. Um, and I, 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 I don't get along with, I don't do that. I can't write that way. Uh, it's all, it's, all, it's sound. When I write it, I, ha I have to read it aloud hundreds of times until I get it exactly the way I want it to go. Um, because I'll tell you why. Um, Poetry is, is uh, as I said, the art of achievement through language, rhythm, and form. Rhythm in poetry is established either by uh, uh, devices like rhyming or meter, or it's established by, by the, 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 the voice rhythms. And if you've got those worked out smoothly, that provides the carrier wave for the message. As if, if, if I have a, a rhythmic piece and I break the rhythm in the middle of it and then carry on, that right there, I've upset the person listening. They're expecting to hear a la-la instead of a la-la-la or something. And, and 
and so the sound of it the tone of the voice the beingness if you like uh is totally important for that um people some people uh, uh look for that exclusively that's sort of a a, a personal contact thing they would like to make with a, with with a, with a poet they want to they want to they want to know his innermost um i don't know uh feelings about things but it's 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 mu it's the basic of music i mean somewhere along the line back in the uh, back, back in our past um before somebody was bonging on drums or whatever uh there was there was certainly there were voice rhythms and you can see those voice rhythms in use with the inuit with the eskimos uh, up, up north uh, you know where they do they do vocal uh vocal chant chanting with their uh somewhere deep in their vocal chords the women do and it's and it's it's the, and it's that rhythm the the They'll wake up and go to sleep with it, you know? Very nice. So, you know, I was going to ask you, what message would you want to leave the viewers watching our show right now regarding art and the future that we're going to be having? Well, if art doesn't create it, it isn't going to happen. Uh, the future is just not going to be there. It, it's it, the future is created by artists. Um, somewhere along the line, there was always the, the, there was always the, the the will or the wish before the, the, anything happened. Nothing follows without the wish, and um, uh, I think that artists are are not well uh, um, received in this in our society unless they're famous, sort of thing. But I know quite a few artists that that, that that do that do amazing amazing work, and and the people around them do better. So they have a, a sphere of influence that's wider than just their desk or their family. They have a sphere of influence that goes out, it spreads, and it spreads with the art. So it, you know we could uh, um, we could, we would do well to, to foster that. I know it, Ireland, I don't know if it's still this way, but at one time. They did not tax artists. That's it. They didn't do it, and now they may. I don't know. But if we if we if we didn't, uh, you know, it could take you it could take you fifty years to, to learn how to how to how to how to make that 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 brush stroke that nobody else can do, um, and then you finally you know you make your your hundred thousand dollars on the picture, and 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 they take half of it away. You know, um, so it's it's just there's no there's no there's no compensation for artists much anymore. It's like they just say, well, you do it for the joy of it. And while that's true, I don't just do it for the joy. I don't do it for me. I, I I the moment I had the thought, the original thought, that was the poetry. I already got it. The rest of it is to take it to somebody else and give it to them. And and um, I've had, I was calculating the other day, probably three quarters of a million readers um, um, online. In the last few years, so so there's there's I know that what I do touches, and I think that it's my job and a job of every other artist and poet to put an idea into somebody's space, into their universe, and whether it has an effect today or tomorrow, at some point, it'll have the effect. It'll 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 arrive. They'll they'll evaluate that painting or that poem um, uh, by something else that happens and go, what, what was that? What was that poem? What was that verse? And they'll find it, and 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 their life will be better. Um, I, I I I think I think we're the um, we're the tip of the spear for the future. Well, you know what? That makes a whole lot of sense to me, and that's why I made this show a time for truth. I want to thank you for bringing the truth about art. I agree with you on the future and that we have to be creative. We have to be imaginative. We've got to break out of the box and not get so old and stayed. And, you know, uh, what I'd love to do is to invite you back and maybe to have some poetry. You know, I do drug education. And so maybe we could do some poetry regarding drug education. And you come up with something that's going to really... You know, do something like you've done with your other poetry. Uh, unfortunately, we had too good a time. The time has flown by. But I wanted to thank you for being on the show. 
Oh, it was it's a great pleasure. Thank you. Well, the pleasure's mine. I'm glad we wrote that poetry. So now when 2024 is a different year, we know it started tonight with Kevin Taylor on the Time <laughs> for Two show. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you. And for all you watching, let's heed Mr. Taylor's words. Let's stop being right and making somebody else wrong. Let's bring a little more art and rhythm and poetry into our lives. Let's make a great 2024. We hope you enjoyed the show. We'll see you the next time on a Time for Truth show. This show was sponsored by A Time for Truth Foundation Incorporated as a community service. Sometimes life can be so damn hard. You don't know where to go. Everything keeps falling apart. Yeah. You try to do your best, but only God knows that you've given everything you've got. But the world takes you down. You just keep. Let your feet